Cool. Um, evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Russell Briggs. Uh, I'm a full stack developer, and I think Kotlin is awesome. Um, so, yeah, uh, Kotlin is a programming language that was uh, released, released by JetBrains a few years ago, um, and it's getting quite big now, um, and I've been using it for some personal projects. I think it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, so, a little bit about me. Um, I've been in software development for about 15 years, um, mainly around business apps. So, apps that manage large amounts of data, um, where like, the correctness of the data is really important, um, and web based as well. So, the whole range of stuff, which is pretty interesting. Um, over the course of my career, I've uh, used about 10 different languages, which is about eight years of Python, um, but I've done things like PHP, uh, C Sharp, and lots of other bits and pieces. Um, and I did believe that, that um, a great developer experience can, uh, ends up with a great customer experience because developers enjoy working on the system. So I'm always looking for technology that helps with that. Cool, and so I'm going to quickly wedge you through what Kotlin is, um, talk about what you can use it for, and if you guys are interested, um, a few resources to help you get um, involved with it. Um, so Kotlin is a very modern uh, language, very succinct. Um, it's basically taken all the best bits of lots of other languages, like Python, uh, C Sharp, and um, lots of other bits and pieces. Um, it's dry, so um, unlike Java, it's very much you only write the things that actually mean something to you. You're not public static void, blah, 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 which is nice. Um, uh, yeah, so it does run on the, on the JVN, Java Virtual Machine, which means you've got full access to the entire Java ecosystem like, from like the last 20 years. So that's like a hell of a lot of software that you can draw upon, which is pretty amazing. And then not only that, is it also works, uh, you can compile to native code, so you can write command line utilities um, you can even compile for iOS as well, which is pretty cool. And you can compile to JavaScript as well if you want to. Um, the main thing is obviously fully open source. Um, it's managed by a foundation, so it shouldn't be going away anytime soon. Um, so yeah, just a quick look at some code. Um, as you can see, it's ni nice and clean. Um, and in terms, of it, although it's a strongly typed language, there's very little typing stuff in there. It's very good at things like type inference, and you've got things like uh, uh, names, keyword arguments, and things down the bottom from Python, which I really like. Um, so yeah, what can you use it for? So one of the biggest usages at the moment is for mobile apps. And so and, uh, Google have um, announced this in 2017 as an official language for Android. So if you're writing Android apps, you'll probably be writing it in Kotlin. Um, but you can also um, create libraries in Kotlin, uh, which can actually run on iOS as well. So you can use it for sharing business logic ac across those two platforms, which is pretty cool. Um, Obviously, because it runs on the JVM, um, you can use um, really mature frameworks like String. Um, uh, String has got a thing I discovered recently for writing microservices really easily, and it then you can spin up the whole microservices stack with logging and, um, and name resolution and loads of stuff with great little code, which is pretty amazing. Um, obviously, running on J um, uh, the JVM, they've got access to JDC for doing database connections. Um, and if you need maximum performance for web server, web servers, um, there's a library called, or a server called Ktor, which is um, pure Kotlin and um, async web server, quite similar to the way Node.js works in terms of again loop and things like that. Um, and then the third use case um, is browser-based apps. So um, as I mentioned, you can compile Kotlin to JavaScript. Um, so if you want to write strongly typed JavaScript, and you don't want to use something like TypeScript. Um, then you can use Kotlin. Um, and the thing I'm really interested in is um, using Kotlin native, you can, um, which gets compiled using LLVM, you can compile to WebAssembly. Um, so WebAssembly is the in, I, I believe, the new standard for writing web apps. Um, yeah, it's basically a binary format that's better than JavaScript. So, not that I like JavaScript, though, so I can't say too much of that. Um, cool. So, yeah, I think it's, uh, Kotlin's awesome because uh, it's strongly typed. Um, means you're very safe with, uh, um, with you know, when you're writing a code, you know that you're doing the right things. Um, great to got up experience taking all the bits and pieces from lots of modern languages. Um, material runtime, uh, you can do object-oriented or functional, um, which is pretty cool. And cross-platform open source. And so if you want to give it a go and get started, um, so IntelliJ is an uh, editor created by the company that made the language. Um, if you want to get it, it's fully open source and free to download, just grab that and, and yeah, check it out. Um, you've got the language reference, which is pretty easy to read. It's quite short, not too wordy. Um, there's lots of good stuff on YouTube, uh, GitHub, and um, there's a weekly newsletter called Kotlin Weekly. Cool. Cheers. That's me.